welcome back to the Developer Landscape series. In this series, I cover topics related to developer tools. These tools help developers get the job done with higher quality and convenience. If you're picking up this series in the middle, you can clone the examples from this series from GitHub. To do this, open the bit.ly link on your screen in your browser, and this will take you to the GitHub repo. You can clone the code by clicking on the clone or download button. The GitHub URL that you see may start with HTTPS and that's fine. Just copy the contents to your clipboard. In your terminal, change to a working directory. I like to put all of my source code in a directory called SRC. Type git clone and paste the GitHub URL and finally hit enter. And now to the show. In the upcoming episodes, I'm going to cover concepts that relate to testing and troubleshooting. In particular, I'll cover virtual ENV, talks, and mocking in Python. Outside of Python, I'll look at some troubleshooting tools like Chrome DevTools, Curl, and Postman. There are so many testing and troubleshooting tools for each language uh, that there's no way I'm even going to scratch the surface for this part of developer landscape. I apologize in advance if I left out your favorite tool. Okay, virtual ENV. Virtual ENV is a really useful tool for Python developers. It helps you ensure that you're using the right versions of a project's Python packages when you're developing it or running your application. Since a generic Python installation will install all packages in a global location, site packages, you might accidentally upgrade or install incompatible ones as you're working through something. In a shared host environment where you can't install into the global site packages, then virtual environments help in this situation too, since you have permissions to install into your uh, local directory. The basics of virtual ENV are that it generates a subdirectory on your system. Uh, I usually just put it in the root of my project where it downloads your project dependencies. You need to activate the virtual environment so that your runtime shell is linked, so to speak, to the virtual environment. Virtual ENV basically prepends your path so that when you execute Python or pip, it will locate the virtual ENV version first. And when you're done, you just deactivate it. Okay, so here's how you do it. We'll go into the example project under test, troubleshoot, Python testing, Norris. This program, uh, what it does is it hits the Chuck Norris joke API and receives a random joke. So uh, you should have Python and pip installed already. Already, I'll be using Python 3. To install virtual ENV, type pip3 install virtual ENV. After it's completed, now you can just type virtual ENV and um, give your virtual environment a name. I usually use venv, but it can really just be anything. To activate the environment, you need to source the activate script. To do this, type source venv slash bin slash activate. You'll see that my command line now has a parenthetical with venv in front of it. To deactivate, just type deactivate. Looking in the venv directory will show a few things. In bin, you have Python and other utilities. In include, uh, a link to Python headers. Uh, I'm not really sure why I think it might be for compiling um, packages, perhaps. And finally, in lib, uh, that's sort of where your Python installation exists. And so this is where your installations site packages is located and where your Python packages will be installed as a result. So the full process then is to create your virtual ENV, activate it, and you're good to go. So let's install the requirements for this project. Before we install the dependencies, let's take a peek inside of our lib directory. I'm going to list the directory of venv lib python 3.6 site packages. You can see it's pretty empty. So let's install the requirements. Type pip3 install-r 
requirements.txt. This will download and install the dependencies into the virtual environment. Looking again at the directory that was pretty sparse before, it's got all of our dependencies now installed. So, you know, I can do things like delete it, uh, the virtual env, um, reinstall the VN venv, reinstall the dependencies to my heart's content, and, um, you know, try to reproduce issues, uh, isolate issues, and so on. So it turns out it's a pretty isolated environment and, again, very beneficial for a Python developer. So that's a rapid-fire tour of virtual env. Uh, you should definitely use this tool if you're writing applications in Python. All right, we've come to the end of another episode of the Developer Landscape series. If you want to try out some of your new skills, head over to Cisco DevNet at developer.cisco.com. You can also stay in touch with me or ask questions via Twitter at A Roach. Also, follow DevNet on Twitter at Cisco DevNet to keep up with our latest adventures. Thanks for watching.